Hey, welcome everybody. Brother Goodwin here. I'm looking forward to uh, spending a half hour with you. Doc is here in the studio. <coughs> We're going to talk about something that I think is very needy. Some things we've talked about before, but uh, something very needy here. I want to read a verse to you in Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, uh-oh, you say, Brother Good, are you going to get on them sons of God again? You better believe I am. Look what it says here. Uh, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. <laughs> and they, looked, they took them wives of all which they chose. You still with me? No problem here yet, right? We, this makes sense, right? Sons of God saw the daughters of men, and that they were fair. Question is, who are these sons of God? And I believe that I'll prove to you, and I know I, I do prove it in my book that I wrote, The Great End Time Distraction. I prove beyond all shadow of doubt the sons of God are not angels at all. They're saints. They're, they're, they're saved people. They're, they're the redeemed on the earth. And uh, they saw the dogs of men. Now let me read verse 3 here. Here's where it gets, it gets twisted by people. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days... Notice the context here. God's talking about men, isn't he? My spirit shall not always dwell or strive with angels. He didn't say angels, did he? He said men. The context of this whole passage, and of course you go back to chapter 4, chapter 5, the context of this is mankind multiplying on the earth. Um, context, context, context. It's very important we get the context. Um, and so verse 3 is very interesting. God is saying, I'm not going to always strive with man down there in the earth. He said nothing about angels. He don't mention angels in the whole chapter here. Um, then he says, man's days shall be 120 years. And I have a theory about that. 120 jubilees is 6,000 years. I think that that's what he's talking about. Uh, look at verse, and then verse 4, here it is, right here. Here's the verse that we, we stumble on. Well, I don't stumble over it, but many out there whose books you have written, read and TV shows that you watch, they stumble over this right here. Let me read it. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. Okay, got that? Then he says, and also... After, you ought to underline that word after. I'm in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. And also after. After what? After that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And they bear children. To, so did you catch it? Verse 4 says, there were giants in the earth in those days. Then it says, after that. The sons of God went into the daughters of men. Marriage took place. And what was born? I'll, I'll tell you what you hear on television. Giants were born into them. That's what everybody says. And I'm going to bring Doc in in just a second here after I get spouting off here. But uh, uh, that's, what, that's what you think it says if you're not looking at your Bible because that's what, that's what everyone is saying. Gi giants were born of this union of the sons of God and the daughters of men because they believe the sons of God are fallen angels. Not true. It is absolutely not true. Sons of God are always redeemed people. And I proved that in the book. Let me read verse 4 again. There were giants in the earth in those days. Did you catch that? There's giants there. Now, we, we can argue on who the giants are and where they came from. That's for another day. That's not the issue here. The issue is they were there before this union this marriage of sons of God and daughters of men. Are you with me? Read it for yourself. Get a King James Bible. Open it up. Chapter 6. Read verses 1 through 4. Get the context here. Understand what you're reading. God is talking about men and women multiplying, children being born. So let me read it again. Verse 4. The giants were already there. It says there were giants in the earth in those days. That's plain. That's plain. That's English comprehend this. And also after, that word after, you need to underline it. After, it says, after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear 
children unto them. That's what it said. It doesn't say they bared uh, Nephilim. It doesn't say they bared uh, giants. It says they had children. Isn't that what we've been doing for 6,000 years, having children? It's no different then than it is now. They weren't having half-breed angel man. They weren't having Nephilim. They, they had children. That's what the Bible says. You want to know what the King James Bible says? I just read it to you. Children were born unto them, and, and the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Not angels, not half angels, men. Okay? All right, we're going we're gonna to discuss this uh, in the program today because this is, a, this is becoming even a hotter topic today than it was a year ago. It's back on the burner, and all the prophecy ministries are talking about this, this crazy stuff, flying saucers and, and uh, uh, abductions of women and impregnating women, all this crazy. And now we've got crop circles. And <laughs> I guess that's where the, air, the, the UFOs must land there, right? Uh, it's nothing but fables. Nothing but fables. Genesis 6 does not mean what these guys say it means. All right, uh, get, your, get you some, some water and some ice, get you some popcorn, and sit back, get your seatbelt on. We're going to start just a moment. Hey, everybody, we're still here. Uh, did you get to some ice water? Did you get to some popcorn? Doc, I, I get fired up about this stuff. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's deceiving an awful lot of good people. Boy, the Bible talks about don't, be, don't go after fables. Yeah. And, and, and science falsely so-called. Yes. And uh, we, we need the truth. Absolutely. Um, yep. You know, for years I've, I've been on the other side of this issue, but never as strong as I am now. I, I understand it better now. Sure. Than I ever have. I wrote the book. You you actually got a couple chapters in here as well, Doc. And uh, I understand this stuff now, and it just upsets me when I when the stuff that I'm hearing coming out of some of the some of the. Well, it's causing world. a lot of fear and intrepidation of for nothing. And it's a Absolutely distraction. Nothing. It's taking us away from what we yep. ought to be talking. And about. it's uh, it's what it's what Peter had to say about Paul's writing. He said, they were talking about the people that didn't understand some of the things Paul said. He said, they have twisted the scripture. Yeah. This arrested it. This is what they're doing. They're twisting scripture. They're inserting yeah. gap theories and every kind of other thing that's non-existent. Yeah. And uh, years ago when I would talk to people on the phone, and, the, and they believed in the angel thing of, mm -hmm. of Genesis 6. And I would say, well, you know, I'm kind of not sure, you know, I lean this way, but... But, but I say, I've, I've got two problems that, that maybe you can help me with this. And, and I'll, you know, I'm setting them up, right? And I said, number one, my first problem is, well, what, do you, what do you do with Genesis 6? The Bible says, and I'll read them that verse, yep. verse 4. I say, now the Bible says the giants were already there before this union. Mm -hmm. And, and I, on the other I, end of the line, silence. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I'll, say, and I'll say, well, what about Genesis 1? i got another problem. There's a biblical principle in Genesis 1 and 2 mm -hmm. that talks about everything reproducing after their own kind. Yes. And I said, that seems, to, that's a principle. I, and I'll say, you know, a, a dog and a cat can't reproduce, a monkey and a horse. And, and I said, you know, an angel and a woman's two different kinds, that's right. aren't they? Absolutely. Silence on the phone. And you know what usually happened? They would change the subject. Oh, yeah. Because they well, couldn't answer those. I, I, but then, again, a lot of it goes back to what people have been taught, yeah. what they've read, They've never thought it through for themselves. And a lot of our preachers have never <laughs> thought it through for themselves. Yeah. And uh, because you've got to let your Bible be its own dictionary and its own commentary. And, and let me help our folks with this subject. You, you brought it up and, and you uh, made a strong thought, thought about it. They were giants in the land and also after that. Mm -hmm. Let me give you the time frame for the book of Genesis. Moses is going to write the book of Genesis. And it's pretty obvious that he's referencing the fact that this is the same time they've approached the promised land. Mm -hmm. They've sent out the spies. 
the spies have come back and said, yes, this is a land flowing with milk and honey, but there are giants in the land. So Moses is writing about this thing of the judgment of God and the flood of Noah. He said, there were giants in the land and also after that. It's not any, I'm here to tell you, there have always been anomalies, both yep. physically and in stature as far as leadership skill. If you see pictures of the relics of Nimrod, which are many that have been found, Nimrod is often pictured as what we would reference to a mighty big man because his relics make him look like he might have been eight or nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. He was a big man. Well, he probably wasn't near that big, but in his leadership skill he was. Yeah. So when it says also after that, it's just simply talking about there were giants and there's still giants. And right. we still have people that. I watched a guy the other day nearly eight foot tall playing basketball. The, boy, if I had to see him, I'd be a giant to me. Yeah. And now, Doc, one of the biggest issues that I have with this, one of the biggest, what I think is a terrible thing, a terrible thing that happens with these beliefs is how they've distorted why the, why the flood took place. Oh, yes. It was man's sin, yeah. a result of a man's sin in the garden. I have that. Verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of, of man, man, not angels, no. not, not Nephilims, no. not That's half right. God looked and saw the wickedness of man was yeah. great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his, he his head was only evil continually. The imaginations of his head. Uh, 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 listen, this is what Jesus is talking about when Jesus said in Matthew, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. You look around and if you cannot see the wickedness yeah. and the imaginations of the thoughts is only evil continually, you've missed it. Yeah. But it's because somebody's trying to tell you uh, there's going to be a bunch of black-eyed people out there and there's going to be giants walking among you. Uh, uh, folks, this yeah. is crazy. That's why I called it. I put a lot of thought in just the <clears throat> title of this book, The Great End Time Distraction. It is a distraction. When you distract people away from the real purpose yes. of Noah's flood. That's right. And you say that the flood was caused because no one... The, they go so far as to say that nobody could be saved. They were all infected yeah. with the DNA of Satan well, through these Well, many of angels. those are the same people who believe in a gap theory, and they believe in a pre-existing world before the one of Genesis yeah. chapter 1. It's because they don't even, and they're all the ones always saying, oh, but the Hebrew says, oh, let me challenge that crowd. Why don't you look and see what the Hebrew says of the very first word of verse number 2? It's wall. It is a couplative tying the explanation of verse number two with what is stated in verse number one. It's not talking about a gap of time. Yeah, you're talking about Genesis 1. Yeah. Genesis 1, verse yeah. 1 and 2. So this, this distorts salvation, redemption. That's right. And they're saying, there's, they go so far as to say that only eight people could be saved. Everyone else had wow. been infected with the DNA. A and I guess one of them must have been, and everybody says it's Ham's wife that brought it over. Yeah, there's, she's, they say that somebody on the ark had to have yeah. been infected. Now that, that blows apart the ah. redemption. I mean, that's like a lost person getting into heaven because the ark is a type of saved yeah. people getting get taken off the earth. And, but God missed one. Yeah, you, yeah these people are. God hadn't gone, isn't going to miss anybody. Yeah. The Bible's very plain here. All you got to do is read it, folks. That's Genesis, it. I read you all the way to verse 4, and then verse 5 tells us why the flood. Yep. And it had nothing to do with angels, had nothing to do with fallen angels, had that, nothing to do with UFOs. And, and then, the, then it's going to go on to say, but Noah found, found grace. grace in that was the his wife's name, right? Oh, I get, uh, I've never thought about it. Yeah. Maybe that my wife's name Mary. Yeah. Huh? He got no, the same I, salvation Abraham. Abraham believed God. Yes. It was We're God all saved righteous. by grace through faith. Yeah, we got a brand and new book. It took a lot of faith for Noah to take the instruction that God was giving him, never having seen a raindrop fall in their life, never been a cloud in the sky. The world had been, yep. for 1,600 plus years, been watered every evening with the geysers sending out the release of the steam. I'm here to tell you, it took a lot of faith to build an ark yeah. for the saving of his household. Yeah, and uh, folks, the brand new book is out now. 
You can see it right there. Redemption through the ages. This, this talks about uh, salvation from Ab uh, Adam's day, Noah's day, Abraham's day, David's day, all the way to the apostles in the New Testament, all the way to the, the people who will be alive during the tribulation. Yep. Doc. Redemption is through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And it's never been by ceremonies. Well, it's that's never why, been by laws. And that's why when you get to the last book of the Bible, chapter 13, he says, uh, from the foundation of the world, the yeah. Lamb was slain. Yeah. It's always been about the innocent yeah. blood. So, Doc, I, um, well, folks, uh, we want to welcome you and thank our partners out there, the many people who uh, support us. We stay on the air because of the gifts of God's people. Amen. Uh, we have no sponsors, not against sponsors. I probably wouldn't mind having some, but yeah. we, uh, we're, it's, it's God's people who write a check or go to the donate button on the website and, or call the 800 number and they, they give their, their donation over the phone or they send it in the mail. Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing what God's people have done. They've kept us on the air for three years yes. now. Very expensive being on television. And, and it's all been by the love offerings of people. Yeah. And I want to also thank, it's a good time to do it, I want to thank all the people that have given on the, on the roof on the project. Roof, yeah. uh, as of today, I had a, had a commitment come in, uh, told me that it was coming, and we have enough funds to do the roof. So the money for the roof is here. Money for the roof is Praise here. Praise the Lord. And uh, if any other comes in, it'll be used for the repairing of the ceiling. The ceiling so, in the, over there. Over and, in the apartment yeah, area. That's going to need yes. to be redone after, yeah. the, seal, after yeah. the roof's done. All right, well, we wanted to mention that, and uh, all of our books you can find right there at the website. In fact, everything is on the website, Prophecy in the Spotlight. The YouTube channel will be staring right at you on the page. The Rumble channel is there, the Facebook page, um, the bookstores, uh, contact information, everything is there. And, of course, you can always call the 888 number, the 800 number, 888-505-SPOT. I think it comes up on the screen behind us here quite often. And uh, we like to stay in touch with the people, yes. Doc. And they, I, I talk to people all, a lot on the phone, probably too much sometimes. But I love to, I love to talk to people. And I love to. Well, I have, I've had a lot of people this week uh, contact me and tell me how much they appreciate the fact that we seem to be out, to be about the only folks of our nature that's still standing where everybody used to stand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's the grace of God. And uh, I'll tell you what, you stick with the King James Bible, yep. it'll keep you on the right path. That's right. You get away from the King James Bible or, or, or away from the Bible. Well, the greater majority of the people that's in this giants or Nephilim, they want to use the word uh, half angel, whatever words they want to do, I don't know any of them that use solely the King no. James Bible. No. It's amazing, though, every once in a while they'd be going along they'd say, now, it's a little clearer in the King James Bible. And I thought, well, why don't you yeah. just start there with it? Yeah. Yeah. But the, but the key is you've oh, got to... Oh, but it's archaic words, you know. You've got to start with, with a clear mind and be willing to let the Bible yeah. show you what yeah. the truth is. If you go in it with a preconceived notion, yeah. it's gonna, it may be hard for the Bible. You, you won't let the Bible convince right. you. And, uh well, Doc, in the, in the book, The Great End Time Distraction, which, which there's no book like this, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm, I say that humbly. There's no book out there because I've looked. I've not seen any. There's a few books. Oh, that, there's a lot of them out there about the Nephilim. Well, oh, oh, 10 times as many, 100 times as many. <laughs> yeah. There's very few people have written on the other side of the issue like yeah. you and I have here because you've got a couple chapters in there too. I think this is irrefutable. I've had, I had another guy... Just a week or two ago, depending on what time this airs, but uh, he, he, I, he said, yeah, I got two of your books. I said, what do you got? He said, oh, I got that great end time distraction. Oh, uh, uh, well, what did you believe before you read that? He said, well, I used to not believe in the Nephilim, and then I got watching prophecy shows, and I believed in it, and then I got your book, and now I, I'm convinced there's no such thing. Yep. So I've had several testimonies. Yeah, these, are not, yeah. these are not children. These are mature Bible believers that have yeah. been, been studying for a long time, mm -hmm. the, book, the book helped them. Well, I mean, if you just let the Word of God be its own dictionary, then you know what the sons of God mean. Well, Doc, I got a chapter in here. I thought we would just share a little bit about this uh, for, the, for the audience here today. Uh, it's chapter 14 in the book, 15 simple facts. Simple. Simple as that. Fifteen simple. Some of them I don't. Well, they can only be simple coming from you. So. 
<laughs> I should have beat you to that, but I didn't. You got ahead of me on that one. And uh, yeah. some of them I don't even explain. I just make a statement. Yeah. That's how simple they are. And uh, now I think last week or the week before we talked about four irrefutable facts yes. a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they're in here too, but I've got 15 simple statements that I make that, that prove how crazy this stuff is. I mean, I've already read, you read Genesis 6, 1 through 5. Yeah, but Dr. So-and-so said. Yeah. If you read Genesis 6, 1 through 5, the story's over. I mean, there it is. Yeah. Um, and then you read Hebrews chapter 1, verse yeah. 5. Yeah. Unto which of the angels said I at any time, any time. thou art my son. God has never yeah, called but, an angel his yeah, son. Yeah, but that might have been before time in that pre-flood world. <laughs> uh, and that yeah. Well, they go to Job 38. That's the only verse that uh, means something else. And they don't That's understand a, a metaphorical statement. Yeah, the whole chapter. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Let me, let's look at these some of these, and we'll let you comment on some of these, Doc. And... Uh, I start out by saying God did not grant creative power to angels, nor did he give them reproductive organs or a seed. This is a fairy tale promoted by folks who got away from the scriptures, the King James mm -hmm. Bible. Below are 15 simple facts that I want to introduce to you. We won't spend much time on them here, but we will look at all of this in greater detail throughout the book. But I just, I just give them. Some of them I explain a little bit, but I mostly just make a statement. Number one, angels are sexless. Am I right about that? That seems to be what Jesus said about neither marrying or giving in marriage. Yeah. And I, I don't find any record in the Word of God uh, where there are any little angels. And I see no because record of were, a, I see no female angel. Because they are servants yeah. in the spiritual world. And they're masculine. Yes. And every time, you know, now by the way, there's no place in the Bible. And I know everybody's got a bunch of long hair on these, yeah. I guess, but uh, but no. There's no place in the Bible where a fallen angel ever appeared. To any, folks, you ever wonder where they come up with these photo, photos? I realize they're drawings, but they're draw, people are drawing pictures of these of these fallen angels as if as if someone has seen them in the yeah. past. They've never they've never appeared to anybody. No. They're spirit beings. Ephesians six tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and and uh, dark. Uh, how do you how do you produce a baby in the in the womb of a human woman? It requires the seed of a man. Yeah, and it requires the seed of a man that takes you all the way back to Adam, and because of one man's sin, the Bible says in Romans, we are all sinners. Yeah. it takes the seed of a man that's in his blood. Yeah. That and the produces blood a child. is within that seed. In that seed. The blood of that baby does not come from mama. That's why the blood in Jesus was divine blood yeah. and could be the payment, divine payment, for all the sin of well, man. These guys, without even realizing it, these guys have, have trampled underfoot the virgin That's birth. exactly right. Because they're saying angels been doing this for thousands of years and then suddenly God did it with Mary. No, well, he didn't. No, no, it's never been done by any no. angel. Uh, angels are sexless. Number two, angels do not have a seed. I think we've yeah, already discussed that. that. They have no seed. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that angels reproduced, had baby angels, and they certainly didn't have baby babies with women. I promise you that's no. a, what a what a fairy tale. What a silly thing for anybody yeah. to say. It's a fable. Angels, number three, do not have baby angels. See, I told you it was simple. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I just line upon line, I build mm -hmm. on it here. They're sexless, they have no seed, there are no baby angels. Number four, angels do not have the power to create, nor does Satan. All that Satan could do with his soothsayers in Egypt was temper or tamper with, man, with God's creation. Yeah. But when, when it came a point when God brought life out of the dust... Couldn't call, he couldn't they weren't that. even present. They couldn't he can, even. He's a counterfeiter, he's, he's a nothing distorter. But. I and mean, right now, everybody's saying that scientists have found a way to create life. No. They have not because they always have to start with something. It's kind of like that old joke, uh, you know, everybody, the devil and everybody talking to God. Well, can you do this? And somebody said, yeah, we, the scientists can make a baby. He said, well, get your own dirt. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All Gotta right. Start with what God has. And I say this all the time, folks. You've heard me say this many times. God, Satan can't create a blade of grass in no. my backyard. No. Because that's, 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 that's crea he's that's not right. a creator. No. He's a counterfeiter and a distorter. He's a distorter 
Exactly right. Yeah, and uh, there, you know, how, how in the world can Satan or an angel create life in the womb of a mother? He, he can't. He can't. Can't. And, and and folks, I don't know what's so hard about this. Well, the movies has told us you can do it. You yeah. know. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time, dog. That's four or five. You cannot cross the lines of procreation given in Genesis nope. one and two after their kind. On day number, number three, God established a law a principle. that is never, yep. cannot never be broken. Changed. Um, sons of God are not angels. Hebrews 1 5. We read that already. We, we quoted it. Unto which the angel said at any time, Thou art my son. Uh, sons of God are believers. John 1 12. As many yes. as received him, to them gave you the power to become the sons That's of it. God. That's letting your Bible be its own yep. dictionary. When God condemned the mess in Genesis 6, the angels were not mentioned. No. Why? Because they were not part of this. <laughs> Genesis, uh, number 10, Genesis 4 and if 5. They were, if, if, if demonic activity might have been involved just like it is today, playing with the minds of people, but it's still physical yep. man. Genesis 4 and 5, and you talk about this a lot, give a summary of the lineage of Seth and Cain. Yep. Still no mention of angels, nope. but rather the lineage of mankind. And then you get to chapter 6, it talks about men well, multiplying. If you, take, if you took 4 and 5 out, take the last verse of chapter 3 and the first verse of chapter 6, and that's right the narrative. Together. Yep. Number 11, Noah found grace. He, he was saved just like I'm yep. saved. Number 12, the claim that Ham's wife was contaminated with the DNA of uh. fallen angels is just wild sensationalism and foolish speculation. Yes. There, we said it. Yeah. And that's exactly what that is. It has no basis in the truth whatsoever. Well, somebody um, just needs to call the truth and the facts facts. Yep. Um, that was 12. Boy, we're getting there. Number 13, the book of Enoch. What book? The book. <laughs> you know, I had a lady call me on the phone. Or maybe it was a text message. She said, well, it says in Jude that, that Enoch wrote a book. I said, well, wait a minute. Let's, get your body. Let's go look at that. It says no such thing. No. It says that Enoch prophesied. Yeah. He didn't, didn't say he wrote a he book. He was a righteous person. He preacher. might have wrote a book, but, yeah. but that's not what Jude yeah. says. And that book that everyone talks about, I don't believe he wrote that one. Oh, I doubt it. Besides that, it's got four different area, four different types. I talked with a preacher about this the other day. He's, he's still hung up on it. Yeah. Um, and we'll close with this, Doc. 2 Timothy 4.4. 4. Hmm. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. fables. And that's where we are today. That's, that's, sadly, that's yep. what this issue has done. But I mean, we're bombarded constantly with new discoveries, quote unquote, yep. always in some remote area that nobody could access. Folks, <laughs> go to the website and get this book. I promise you, this book has the answers that you're looking for. This book will help you. I hope you know Jesus as your Savior. hope you're ready to go. I hope you're ready for that trumpet to sound because he's coming soon. Hope you're ready to meet him and contact us if you need some help with that. Till next time, keep your eyes on them skies.